Hey, I've been getting a lot of questions from students and clients about the solar eclipse. But one of the little known facts around solar eclipses or eclipses in general is they always happen in twos. You can't have a solar eclipse without a lunar eclipse. There are two things that have to be in play in order for us to experience an eclipse. And they're related to the moon cycle and the phases of the moon. You can only have an eclipse on a full moon or a new moon. But every full moon we don't have an eclipse and every new moon we don't have an eclipse. So what makes it possible to have an eclipse? One of the things we know is that the moon is on its orbit around the earth and the earth is on its orbit around the sun. So depending on where it is we will have either a full moon or a new moon every 29.5 days. The new moon is of course the start of the new lunar cycle. So as the Earth is here on its pathway, and the Moon is here around the Earth on its pathway, you have these two pathways that will intersect 180 degrees apart from our view. If you're looking straight up in the sky and you turn yourself in a circle, it makes 360 degrees. So 180 degrees across the circle, we have something called the lunar nodes, and these are mathematical points. So if you wanted to, you could look up and you could study those. You know, the lunar nodes are basically where the elliptics intersect between the sun and the moon. But I really hated this when I looked at the graphic because it's not even close to accurate. And you can't even do something that's accurate because of the size of the sun and the moon. And you're putting Earth in the very center, so I tried that. So when I started working with my graphics to try and understand things practically for myself, I basically came up with this graphic. And so where these two intersect, if you take the image you find on Wikipedia and you look at that standard model, you see, yes, there is a pathway of the moon and there is a pathway of the sun, but it's actually not accurate. But where it intersects, you have the south moon node, and where it intersects 180 degrees away, you have the north moon node. So these are mathematical points in space where the elliptics cross, the sun and the moon. But we're looking at this as though this Earth is the center of the universe, is why I take issue with the little images you'll find online. So I did my own. So basically, if you want to look at it a little more accurately, this, is, this would be, this is a little bit more accurately. Of course, the size and scale isn't correct. But the south moon node tends to hold what is considered south archetypally. So it's what we're moving away from. And the north moon node is our desires and what we seek to move toward. South moon node also indicates karmic, like um, action and consequence, the stuff that's coming back, what goes around comes around. And the north moon node indicates stuff that tends to be more dharmic, like what you're born to do and be and things like that. If you want to look at this from an esoteric perspective. so. The north and the south nodes during an eclipse are the indicator that, that tip the scales as to whether it will be an eclipse or not because it, they have to cross each other's path at a lunar node, which is why it's called an eclipse and why the earth casts shadows and the moon casts shadows and all sorts of different things before. And so in a lunar eclipse, the earth moves across the path and the shadow of the earth is cast over onto the moon and that's what makes it a lunar eclipse and that's why eclipses always come in twos because the moon will then continue to move from that position over towards the new moon which is when the moon is conjunct with the sun but at the midway point it tends to do something which triggers an awareness of these nodal paths. And that we have to go into the esoteric studies of astrology and some of the ancient um, backgrounds for, for modern day astrology. A lot of it began in the Hebrew traditions and just like the Romans taking over the story of a Jewish guy named Christ, the Hebrews and the Abrahamic traditions um, were taken over by the Greeks and then Greek mythology stories started to be applied in the study of the heavens. But further out from all of this, we have the solar system 
that is moving through something that beyond it are encircled by 12 star patterns and these star patterns are called constellations. They're constellatory star patterns. And that's where we get the words Aries and Libra, Taurus, Leo, all of those from. And the star patterns rule the seasons of our year, um, uh, related particularly to the equinox and the position of the sun as it moves along something we call the elliptic of the, around the sun. And it takes about 18 months for the lunar nodes to move through an axis between two signs. And each of the signs on uh, above the horizon and below the horizon carry axis energy that we learn to center in between. So they move through this mathematical point of where the Sun and the Earth cross, move through these constellations of the zodiac in what's called a precession. They, they rotate backwards, counterclockwise, through this precession. And for 18 months, approximately, sometimes closer to two years, the lunar nodes will be in a specific star pattern axis. And right now, our lunar nodes are on the axis between Leo and Aquarius. And so for us, after our lunar eclipse on August 8th, the midway point, almost halfway between the lunar and the solar eclipse, tends to trigger an awareness of both our no north and south nodes. It's called the nodal path or the nodal axis. And so it triggered an awareness between the value of an individual and the ability to love with the heart and the value of a group and a collective that people love with their mind related to. Aquarius governs large groups. And when that occurred for us in the U.S. was this past Saturday afternoon and there was a large clash between a white supremacist group and people that disagreed with them and there were tragic outcomes from that. But we're learning from that tragedy to, to find a polarity and a balance between loving and seeing people individually one-on-one -on -one, as well as our indignation of the group and the social breakdowns and, and um, unrest. And so there are places online that you can study these nodal paths that will have a template of when they're in what sign. And so right now we are in an 18-month period between May of 2017 and November of 2018 where we will be working on that axis, that nodal axis between Leo, who loves from the heart and is the creativity on an individual level, and the collective um, myopic views of group mentalities that love with the head, their team, their side. And so the last time that Leo was in an axis with Aquarius was between October 21st, 1998 and April of the year 2000. So there was all of this um, going on around the year two, the Y2K thing that had the collective's attention. For me personally, um, between 1998 and 2000 is when my marriage broke up, like Aquarius had to come in. And for me, that manifested um, I don't, I don't see this as fate, I see it as weather patterns. They're just a little further out there than our immediate atmosphere, so it affects us on a psychological level, on a really subtle level. But for me, that was breaking up old patterns that I had made an agreement with me in my head that I was going to stay married no matter what, and that broke out so I could venture forth as an individual and be able to express my own creativity in a way I hadn't been able to before. Beyond that, Leo and Aquarius axis occurred in the early 80s, and that was when we had a lot of women put on power suits and went to work, and the yuppies, and there was this big social change. Before that, Leo and Aquarius, what was happening with Leo and Aquarius is reminiscent of what we're experiencing now. It was a nodal path we were on between June of 1961 and December of 1962. And during that time, you had the Freedom Riders in the Deep South and a huge amount of um, social um, 
civil rights issues coming to the forefront. So they will carry an energy much like the weather does or the season does. And so for me, I look at this much less as something mystical or magical, but as weather patterns that tend to affect us, both culturally as a society and as individuals. So there's this need to balance the view of a collective group of people saying the way things should be and the value of each individual in the group. And we saw that come to a head when uh, someone of the collective who was hanging on to his love and his mind of the concept that his group and what they said was right, white supremacists, that he actually plowed people down. And suddenly we're getting to know the individuals in the group that were victimized by this horrific event that came out. And there's more to it. I mean, the moon was conjunct Uranus, which is the awakener, and it breaks up and shakes up things. It's the planetary ruler of Aquarius, which is our south node, our karma. Our karma right now is to get too myopic and to affiliate with groups as the problem rather than seeing the individuals within that group in our Leo North Node. And so after that midpoint that causes a stressor that brings up both perspectives that have to be dealt with in this somewhat seemingly paradoxical axis, then we move on and the moon continues to make its way around until it reaches the new moon. And that will happen this Monday. And because the new moon is happening so close to one of the nodes, it happens close to our north node. What that means is we're going to experience in the continental United States a total solar eclipse, our first total solar eclipse to cross the full continent of the um, northern hemisphere of the continental United States since 1918, I think it was. And so this eclipse carries a lot of esoteric, energetic charge to it because it's activating these nodes where this path crosses. So in the heavens where the masculine path of the sun and the feminine path of the moon intersect, it is said that our spirits come in through the south node. So on your natal chart, which is a snapshot of the sky at the moment you were born, on your south node, it indicates where you were and why it was time to be born right then. And your north node indicates where you want to be by the time you're complete in this life. And so um, going through an eclipse cycle is like being forced through a metaphor of your whole life from start to finish. And so it prompts us to get really present and advance our soul in a ways that we do what we would do in an entire lifetime in two weeks time. So it tends to be um, really intense. People will have really intense circumstances surface in that so-called eclipse portal. So that's the esoteric story, if you want to have a little fun with that. And it's a deeper way to find a uh, more meaningful spiritual connection to what's going on with the solar eclipse. And I will be standing in the path of totality up in um, Idaho. I'm traveling up there with some friends. And so I can go log in to our Soul Weather group and study that nodal axis between Aquarius and Leo. And so when Leo is the North Node, it encourages us to shine, to be a gift to the world by sharing the love we have from the hearts with, uh, with others on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's an indication that you're ready to feel comfortable at the center of things. Gain the ability to acknowledge qualities within yourself and within others personally you might not have been able to accept or see. And Leo's nature is self-expressive, assured, optimistic, artistic, created, warm-hearted. It operates on an individual plane where it shines. It's ruled by the sun. Concerned with romance and admiration and attention and all sorts of wonderful things. An Aquarius South Node seeks to integrate radical and rebellious energy. It can be hypocritical. It has the gift and the talent for being inventive and innovative. It thinks outside the box. It is unexpected. Anywhere Aquarius or Uranus is on your chart is where you can expect the unexpected. And unfortunately, when the moon was halfway in between these two, it was actually over here, was when the 
the guy plowed his truck through a group and it was like out of the blue, unexpected. And it was actually, um, Uranus was in Aries, which is the warrior, the god of war. And wherever Uranus is in Aries, aspecting something major like the moon or something, there will usually be blood someplace. Um, it happened during the Pulse nightclub massacre, massacre as well. So um, these weather patterns are hard on the natural man when we're not willing to get conscious. But when we approach them mindfully, they can be an incredible gift. And so tragically, that was not the case this last Saturday. But, um, but truth be told, um, for an Aquarius South Node, it's time to move from objectifying others as a group for their beliefs, as well as go from loving with your head into loving the individual with your heart. And that's the Leo North Node that we're headed towards. And so we've been forced in a very short amount of time to, to approach that and to deal with that as a collective culture and each one of us soul searching individually. And there's a fantastic ad that was, I think, put out on the Super Bowl as the news line. I'll say that and so they don't know who each other are. And so when you work your way back towards the end of the um, commercial, they have sat down together, they've built something together, they follow the next directive and grab a beer. And then when they do that, they have to look up and then they play the video that they started with before they knew each other. And so people of two disparaging groups are able to sit down and connect together. So this video I'll put in the comments below and you can take a look at it because it depicts perfectly the nodal path that we're on that is being activated in these two weeks from the full moon lunar eclipse to the new moon solar eclipse that we get to experience on Monday morning. So I hope this has been helpful. It's uh, just another way that I use my passion to help people find contentment. Namaste.